Hi guys, welcome to this video looking at the displacement reactions of the halogens. Okay, you should have covered displacement reactions before. And you should remember that a displacement reaction is where a more reactive metal or element swaps with a less reactive metal or element. So the question is, how can we use this to work out the reactivity of chlorine, bromine and iodine? So, to figure out the order of reactivity, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take three salt solutions, potassium chloride, potassium bromide, and potassium iodide. I'm going to add chlorine, bromine, and iodine to them, and we're going to see if a reaction occurs. If a reaction occurs, that element that we've added in is more reactive than the element in the salt. So, for example, if I added chlorine into potassium bromide and a reaction occurred, therefore chlorine would be more reactive than bromine. So we're going to carry that out, and we're going to see which is the most reactive of the three. Now, if I take chlorine and add it to potassium chloride, you will see no reaction because they are the same element. If they're both exactly the same element, the same reactivity, you will see no change. The same goes with bromine and potassium bromide and iodine and potassium iodide, which you'll see a bit later on. Okay, if we start off with chlorine then. Chlorine is a colourless liquid, and what I'm going to be doing is putting chlorine into potassium chloride, potassium bromide and potassium iodide all three of which are also colourless solutions. Now, as I said, when you put chlorine into potassium chloride, nothing will happen. So let's have a look at what happens when we put chlorine into potassium bromide. As you can see here, I've got a colour change. It's gone from colourless to a yellowy-orange colour. So if we have a look at the word equation for the reaction that's going on here, I'm starting off with potassium bromide, I'm reacting it with chlorine, Cl2. Chlorine is more reactive, therefore it displaces it, and I will end up with potassium chloride and bromine. And because it displaces it, as you can see, it's gone from colourless to an orangey colour. If we move on to potassium iodide, if I add chlorine to that, you can see there is another colour change, therefore a reaction has occurred. So if we move on to the equation, I've got potassium iodide, Ki, reacting with chlorine, Cl2. Chlorine is therefore more reactive, so it swaps with it, it displaces it, and I end up with KCl and I2. And my colour change goes from colourless to brown. If we move on to bromine water, adding that into potassium chloride and potassium iodide, you shouldn't see a reaction, as you can see here. There's no colour change when potassium chloride is added to bromine. That's because chlorine, we've already worked out, is more reactive, so it will not displace with it. If it doesn't displace with it, there'll be no colour change. Potassium iodide, on the other hand, as you can see here, there is a colour change, and it's gone to the same colour as potassium iodide did when I added chlorine water. And the reason for that is because bromine is more reactive than iodine. You can see that from the symbol equation here. Therefore, it displaces it, so I get KBr and I2, and the colour changes from colourless to brown. Then, finally, iodine. We've already worked out that chlorine and bromine are more reactive than iodine, therefore we shouldn't see anything happen. As you can see on the left, I've put iodine into all three of them and there has been no colour change. This proves that iodine is less reactive than bromine and chlorine and therefore there is no colour change seen. So if we summarise everything that we've seen there, we know that chlorine displaces both bromine and iodine. We saw a colour change, therefore chlorine is the most reactive of those three. We know that bromine displaces iodine, but not chlorine, therefore chlorine is the most reactive, bromine is the second most reactive, and iodine is the least reactive. Now what that can tell us is the reactivity of the two ones that we haven't looked at today. So if we look at fluorine and acetine, you'll notice that chlorine on the periodic table is higher up and iodine is lower down. So fluorine, you can make a pretty accurate prediction that because it's higher than chlorine in the periodic table, it's going to be the most reactive. And it is. Fluorine is the most reactive element. And therefore, astatine, which is down at the bottom, is going to be the least reactive element out of those five. 
Okay, that is everything on this video. Let's have a look at a couple of questions. So I'm going to start you off with an I6 marker, which says, look at the table below, use it to explain how you could prove the order of reactivity of chlorine, bromine, and iodine based on what you've just seen in this video. So in this case, we're using sodium chloride, sodium bromide, and sodium iodide. It's exactly the same. Just imagine that's potassium chloride, potassium bromide, and potassium iodide. We're reacting those salts with chlorine, bromine, and iodine. You can see here there's a reaction when chlorine is added to sodium bromide and sodium iodide. There's no reaction when bromine is added to sodium chloride, but there is when you add it to sodium iodide, and iodine doesn't react with any of them. So how could you use that to prove that order of reactivity? Once you've done that, I'd like you to write a word equation for the displacement reaction between sodium bromide and chlorine. And number three, write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction between sodium iodide and bromine. So I've given you the chemical formula there. Have a go at it. If you're not sure, I will put a link in the top right hand corner with just reminding you how to do the balanced equations and the word equations for this. And then once you're done, we'll have a look and see whether you're right or not. Pause the video now and have a go. Right, let's see how you've done. So if we look at question one, which says, look at the table below, use it to explain how you could prove the order of reactivity of chlorine, bromine, and iodine, including what you would see in this experiment. So there are loads of things you could have said. So if we start off with chlorine, nice and simply, if chlorine reacts with both of sodium bromide and sodium iodide, it's more reactive than them. Therefore, it will displace them both. So you get one mark for saying it's more reactive than both iodine and bromine, one mark for saying because it displaces them both. Then talk about bromine. You can talk about the fact that there's no reaction with sodium chloride, but there is a reaction with sodium iodide. Therefore, it is more reactive than iodine, but less reactive than chlorine. And therefore, it will only displace iodine. And then finally, iodine, you can turn around and say there's no reaction, therefore it is less reactive than bromine and chlorine, and it will not displace either. The next thing is, what will you see? So if you start off with chlorine, when it reacts with sodium bromide, it will go from colourless to orange. And then when it reacts with sodium iodide, it will go from colourless to brown. And similarly with bromine, when it reacts with sodium iodide, it will go colourless to brown. If we move on to the word equation then, so we're starting off with sodium bromide. We're reacting it with chlorine. So the next thing you need to do is work out out of the bromide and the chloride, which is the most reactive. Chlorine's up at the top, therefore, that is the most reactive, and it will displace with it. It will swap with it. Therefore, I'm going to end up with sodium chloride plus bromine. You get one mark for your left-hand side and one mark for your right-hand side. If we do the balanced equation, so if we start off with sodium iodide, which is NaI, and we react it with bromine. Hopefully by now you remember bromine is diatomic. The next thing you do, again, which is the most reactive? Bromine's higher up, therefore it's that. So that will end up in the compound. So I go Na, and again, hopefully from the work that we've done today, you'll remember that you need one of the metal, one of the non-metal. So NaBr, and then iodine is diatomic, so I2. So you get one mark for the left-hand side, one mark for the right-hand side, and then all that's left is to balance it. So I've got two bromines here, so I need to put a two in front of here, which gives me two Na and two Br. I've also got two iodines, therefore I need to put a two in front of there, and that is balanced for my third mark. Okay, there is a review question for you, which is, you are given a sample of chlorine, bromine, and iodine. You're also given samples of magnesium chloride, magnesium bromide, and magnesium iodide. Use these chemicals to plan an investigation to work out the order of reactivity of the halogens. You should include a step-by-step -step set of instructions to find out the order of reactivity, word and chemical equations for the reactions that occur, and the colour changes for the reactions that occur. Again, this is exactly what we've been through in this video, so you can look back if you're not sure, and hopefully that will help you with it. That brings this video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can have a look at my latest video up there. You can also have a look at my website if you haven't seen it before, and you can click on subscribe down below. Bye now.